Welcome to the African Transformation Spotlight, brought to you by the African Center for Economic Transformation. We are an African-led, African-driven economic policy institute based in Accra, focused on the entire African continent and connected to the world. My name is Belinda Ayamga. I am communications manager here at Asset, and I'm thrilled today to be joined by Madame Rosine Sorikulibali. Rosine is a member of the Asset Board, and a former Minister of Economy, Finance and Development in Burkina Faso. Prior to that, she worked for several years with the United Nations in various senior level capacities. Rosine is also currently the chair of the Club of Sahel in West Africa, which Secretariat is hosted by the OECD and is in charge of dealing with food security. Rosine, welcome to the African Transformation Spotlight. Thank you very much and really thank you for inviting me. I'm really glad that it will be interviewed and uh, I'm really feel it as a privilege and a honor. It's good to have you. And today we are talking about a topic that is very dear to me and I'm sure a lot of our audiences, gender equality and how this can drive transformation in, in Africa. So I think I'll just go right into my questions for today and into this very interesting conversation. Now, when we talk about gender equality um, for economic transformation, why does it matter? Why does gender equality matter for economic transformation? Thank you. This is a very important question. And uh, even when you see the five pillars of uh, asset strategic plan 2021 to 2025, gender is part of this five pillars. We have, uh, as you know, governance and economic management. We have youth employment. We have youth uh, gender equality. We have also all the activities around the regional integration, et cetera, and so on. So gender is very important because when you see our continent, 50% of the population are women. This number one. And 50% of the population are women, and they contribute only 30% of the GDP, which means that there is really a space to make progress and increase their participation. This number. The second one, I do believe that investing is women is not only because it contributes to the economy, etc., but also it's a question of rights. I do believe that you cannot afford having half, more than half of your population lagging behind. Mm -hmm. So, and the international community, including the leaders of uh, our continent, when they participated in the, uh, in the international community meeting about the sustainable development goals, there was an agreement. Mm -hmm. And the goal number five is about gender equality. Mm -hmm. So the international community decided that putting gender at the top of the political agenda is important for transformation. Mm -hmm. So I do believe that it's for a good reason asset or is also involved in gender equality. Yeah. So you've worked in the public sector um, for a number of years. Have you seen um, during this period any notable advancements that we've made in policies that promote gender equality and equity? So tell us what you've seen that works. Um, if you can give us examples of where this has happened and why you think these drivers were important in advancing gender equality. I do believe that there are maybe the, the, the answer should be dual. There are two aspects. The first one in social sector, particularly in education. When I take my own example, it was not given to her girls going to school. But now if you go to class, class, classrooms, you will see that sometimes there are even more girls than boys. Mm -hmm. So this is a progress and it's important mm -hmm. to acknowledge that. The second point I want to make is all the, the legislative aspect, the laws that have been adoptive, adopted discriminative or positive actions, we can call it that way, the code of family, and even for the women's participation in politics, there are some laws that have been adopted. But one thing we have to, to be very frank, mm -hmm. one thing is to adopt laws or texts, but the other one that is most important is how 
it is implemented. At that level, I think that the challenges are still huge and we have a lot to do. Mm. All right. So progress has been made, but there are still a long way to mm. get to gender equality. What do you think we can do to bridge this gap? So we've come a long way. There are still gaps that need to be filled. Maybe tell me a bit where the gaps are. We've said one in implementation, but are there others? And how do we how do we get to a place where we, we've bridged at least many, if not all, many of these gaps? It is difficult sometimes to change mentalities. It's about mentality. It's grounded. It's in our DNA mm -hmm. in Africa. When you want to send children to school, people sometimes particularly in the rural sector and those having you know the country the country despite the size of the population because uh, almost 30, 20 percent of the global population of the world are african so 20 percent but we contribute only three percent to the gdp yeah. you see the gap we have also reserves, mineral reserves on our continent. This is a reality as well. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we see people are not, you know, getting jobs, the youth are there, etc. Poverty is the poorest continent. Mm -hmm. To say that when you do not give opportunity to the families, sometimes they have to make decisions. Mm -hmm. If I have to make a choice between sending my daughter mm -hmm. or my son to school in the village they will say okay i will send the boy mm -hmm. because the daughter will got <laughs> will get married mm -hmm. you see mm -hmm. so it's a question of mentality that's why i think that two actions most of the the actions that i see is taking the right decisions this is the political leadership but having also the civil society organizations mm -hmm. voices that can be raised you know, to name and shame, to, you know, see what, where we have good examples, mm -hmm. so we should acknowledge that. But where we see that there is no progress, there is no political uh, uh, involvement, mm -hmm. political decisions are not taken at that level, seeing that the population, overall population and civil society should play a role. Yeah. And actually, you mentioned political decisions at that level. And that takes me to the next question I want to ask you. You've been a minister of state in Burkina Faso. What role can increased um, women's political leadership play in driving, you know, faster and more sustainable progress in Africa? Yeah, I was talking about civil society organizations, oh. people who can champion, who are dedicated, that we, we can use that ch channel. We have also examples when you see that we had a president who was a woman, yeah. Ellen, in, yeah. in, in Liberia. Yeah. I think that they are examples that we can also share to see that it is possible. It is not impossible. We can do it. I think that's something that is important. And as a, when I was a minister, I took a decision telling my the sectoral ministers, if you invest, you if if you invest more, you want to invest more mm. in gender equality in your sector, I will give you more resources. Mm. So I think that we can take also positive actions, incentives, so that people who resist will mm. say, okay, we have interest in that. Mm. Otherwise, people, you know, they, they won't do, they will not do anything. Mm. They are not ready for change. Mm. And you have to get people who are agent of change mm. to introduce those improvements in our society. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's very important. Now, if you look across Africa, um, in recent months we've heard about several coups, you know, across um, West Africa. Do you see a connection here between countries' performance in economic transformation and these um, political unrest or coups that we we see around the continent? What what is uh, clear for me? I think that's that obvious. That when you have coups in countries, it weakens the country. That's important. That that it's very clear. We don't have any need any demonstration mm -hmm. to show that this is the reality. Second, when you have coups in countries, there is no there is institutional fragility, and then it takes time to build, to have a vision, 
to see what we want to have, even people participating to build alliance is very difficult because sometimes the political dialogue is even broken. And lastly, I think that's one is also important. We, be, we have to be aware that if you do not create a conducive environment for investment, the private is not coming, mm. national or international. Mm. You won't get foreign direct investment in your country. Yeah. The private that are in your country, they will also flee. They will go outside the country. So it's really important to have stable and strong institutions mm. because it's creating additional shocks mm. to the economy and to the country. The country yeah. mm. That's true. Mm. So... <clears throat> I'll ask one last question, and I think I'll ask it now, and then afterwards we'll have you speak mm -hmm. directly to the camera mm -hmm. on the ATI. So, you know, um, ASET recently launched our African Transformation Index, which measures um, countries' performance on our growth with debt mm -hmm. um, parameters. Why is this tool important, um, and why should, you know, government, African governments, policymakers, pay attention to, to the ATI. Yes, the ATI is, is important. When you see the, uh, the components, you have the, the, the indicators, you have the, 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 the dimensions and the indicators. So it's a kind of tracking system mm -hmm. because it has been created because we have seen that in most of our countries, there were growth rate important, including growth in the country without transformation. That's why we came to the concept of growth with debt, mm. uh, which is diversification. You cannot continue, uh, as I think this ancient saying, that you cannot continue doing the same thing mm. and expecting a different result. Mm. <laughs> so I think that if we do not diversify our economy, we'd create more dependence on, you know, factors that are not under our own control. Diversification mm -hmm. is important. You see also a question of export competitiveness. That's important because we are in a world, if you do not make progress, though the others are making progress. Mm -hmm. So you, you know, that's something that you have to pay attention to. You have also the question of technology. That's important because when we see the situation in Africa, last week I attended a bit, attended meeting on food security on the EUMA countries, in the EUMA country, and we saw that in the past 10 years, we had like two people in the rural sector feeding 10 persons. But now you have only one person. Mm. Why? Because the young people, they don't see opportunity in the rural sector the technology is not there, there is no innovation. Mm. So they come to the cities, the big cities. Mm. So at the end of the day, that's create also the gap, gap between what is needed to, need to feed the population and what is available. Mm. So I do believe that it's important, this indicator is important. It can allow decision makers to have a scorecard to see where they are making progress, mm where they are weak and where they can find good examples they can draw to, for their own country. So I do believe that it is some instrument that can be useful uh, to our countries. This has been an interesting conversation. And just before we round up, I'll ask Rosine one last question. So our viewers are abroad, their policymakers, their um, development partners, there are young people, the African youth that we talk about, what would be your word to them on how important gender equality is and what role should we all be playing to make sure that we get to where we need to be when it comes to gender equality and equity? Thank you so much for uh, this last question. I believe that everybody should be convinced that we do not choose to be male or female. It's a question that is, you know, you just, you are, you, you are born and you are male or female. So in that situation, you have also to think about if you were a girl and you did not get the same opportunity like your brother to go to school, what will be your situation? So I think it is important to think about ourselves, to also see that sometimes in your family, 
you can see that your young uh, daughters or sisters are the ones who are making efforts more than the boys. So if you see that, you can say that, okay, maybe we have to take the right decision as decision makers, but also in the family, help your sister go cook, etc. Don't say that, oh, this is not for me. This is for girls. No, I think that we, sh we have to think that way because when you see how the society is and you see the developed continent and countries, you will see that when, when people invest in women, they increase the opportunities for the others as well. And before I end, uh, I would like to thank you all for the work that you are doing. And particularly, I want to commend KY because it's also creating new generation. I think that we have done ours, so the young generation should be beyond. So it's important for you to take our continent but, uh, forward, to move the continent forward instead of backward. So uh, that would be my last word. And thank you so much again for thank this Thank you so much, Rosine. It's been a pleasure and an interesting conversation. You've been watching the African Transformation Spotlight. And today we've had with us Ms. Rosine Koulibaly, um, who was former Minister of Economy, Finance and Development in Burkina Faso. So this is where we will end today's conversation, but we will come your way again next time with another edition of the African Transformation Spotlight. In the meantime, stay well and we'll come to you soon.